Welcome to an online content module for the 6th grade Georgia Standards of Excellence in Social Studies. The Georgia Standards of Excellence will often be referred to as the GSE throughout this module. Today we'll be exploring what students need to understand about how citizens participate in autocratic and democratic governments. In elementary school, students learned about the foundations and structures of American democracy. Use this background knowledge to your advantage when developing lessons, because students are coming to you with basic knowledge about democracy. With that said, students have not been exposed to other government types, so the key verbs of compare, contrast, and explain are essential to emphasize in your instruction. We are focusing in this module on the introductory government standards for each region in this course. Notice how similar to one another each of the standards are. In the first government unit of the year, more time should be devoted to developing student understanding of autocratic and de democratic government structures. In subsequent units, a review of the concepts is in order, but teachers will be able to more quickly lead students in applying the concepts to the countries being studied after they have learned the government forms for the first time. Also note that Cuba is the only example in the sixth grade standards of an autocratic government. So when you get to CG3, you may want to bring Cuba back again into the student's frame of reference so that they can compare it with democratic governments of Europe. Before students are introduced to the two government forms in these standards, a brief overview should occur about the general purpose of government so that all students start with a common foundation. The basic nature of government is the social contract between citizens and their leaders. The concept behind government is power, and what students will be examining when they study these standards is the power that citizens have to influence their governments. iCivics.org is included in the references for this module because they have some wonderful lessons that can support you in ensuring that students understand the foundational concepts of government. Because the standards emphasize knowing how leaders are chosen, plan to help students understand what we mean by leaders in government. The terms chief of state and head of government are not synonyms and should be presented to students as individual vocabulary terms. If this isn't done prior to introducing the government of a particular region, confusion is likely for students as they try to understand what is meant by a country's leader in different contexts. As is evident from this chart, some countries separate out the role of chief of state from the head of government, and others combine the roles into one leader. Students must explain the role of citizens in the selection of the head of government for each of these countries. When you assess students for these standards, make sure you are assessing their knowledge of the heads of governments of the various countries in the GSE. This chart is for teacher reference, but it comes with an important caveat. Social studies teachers are usually good at paying attention to current events and developments from around the globe, and this is an area where it really matters. Countries frequently have changes in their governments for many reasons, so it's recommended that you use a reputable source for determining current facts about the leaders of the countries in the sixth grade curriculum. An excellent source for current government information is the World Factbook, which is referenced at the end of this presentation. Autocratic governments put all of the power to rule in a single person, like a dictator or king. The most common types of autocratic governments are monarchies and dictatorships, although students aren't required to know different types of autocratic governments. Remember, the focus is on the way citizen participation happens and is primarily addressed in how leaders are chosen. The way that autocratic governments work is by greatly limiting the power to govern to one individual whose decisions are unquestioned by others in government or the citizens of the nation. In an autocratic government, there are two main ways that leaders are chosen. If the autocratic government is a monarchy, then the next leader will always come from the king or queen's children or grandchildren or someone else that is close to their family bloodline. The citizens of the country don't get to choose the next leader. Biology chooses him or her instead. If an autocracy is run by a dictator, that person has often become the leader through the violent overflow, overthrow of the previous government, and if they stay in power long enough, usually the dictator will choose a successor, either from their family or inner circle of trusted advisors. Regardless of what kind of autocracy it is, citizens have very little influence 
uh, on their governments. If voting is allowed in an autocratic country, it will either be limited to local governments rather than national, or there will be only one person's name from which to choose on the ballot, which doesn't offer citizens a real choice in who leads their country. Autocratic governments are known for centralizing power in one national figure, and as a result, citizen participation is limited or even absent altogether. Likewise, in order to maintain citizen compliance in this style of government, rights and liberties afforded to those in democratic countries tend to be quite limited under autocratic leadership. Limits of free speech, a free press, and a mandated religion are common in countries with autocratic governments because measures such as these help to ensure that citizens are unable or unwilling to rebel against their government. Understanding these features of citizen participation in autocratic governments can help students to clearly contrast them with the democratic style. Cuba is the best example of an autocratic style of government among the countries that sixth graders study. Cuba has an autocratic form of has had an autocratic form of government since its revolution in 1959. At that time, Fidel Castro led armed revolution and deposed the previous government. Once Castro was in power, the systems of government changed so that he would remain in power. Some features of Cuba's government which can be used to help students see how autocracy works include the people do not elect the leader of the nation. In 2008, Fidel Castro turned over much of his power to his younger brother, Raul Castro. However, at no time since 1959 have the people of Cuba been allowed to choose their national leader. The only political party allowed is the Communist Party, and Cuba's constitution specifically forbids the sharing of power or the removal of the Communist Party. This ensures that power remains with one leader. There are few checks and balances in an autocratic system that would help to diversify power. For example, the legislative branch does not make laws. They only meet to ratify laws made by the executive branch. The judicial branch has the power to negate civil liberties of citizens who openly oppose communism, which severely limits the rights of citizens to speak up for governmental change, thus limiting their power. Although Cubans aged 16 and older can vote, the only real choices they have at election time are representatives for their local region. Those representatives in turn elect the legislature, which only exists to rubber stamp the decisions of the dictator. Let's take a look at how democratic governments function differently. A main tenet of democratic governments is to disperse the authority to govern among many different groups, including citizens. In elementary social studies, students learn that democracy in the United States is guided by the idea of checks and balances and the separation of power. Structures intentionally built into democratic governments so that no individual or small group has too much power. What results is a government that is flexible and able to be amended as circumstances dictate that is subject to ongoing critique and is more responsive to the needs of citizens since the main goal is not to preserve the power of an individual but to respond to the needs that collectively arise in the nation the hallmark of all democratic governments is that citizens are allowed to vote for national leadership in another video the differences between parliamentary and presidential democracies will be described but for the standards we are now considering it is essential that students be able to read, view, or hear descriptions of the features of government and identify that government as autocratic or democratic with reasoning to justify their response. In addition to free, fair elections of national leaders, democratic governments typically allow their citizens to participate in government in multiple ways. Democratic governments include freedoms and civil liberties such as the right to assemble, the right to petition the government, the right of ordinary citizens to pursue political office, a free press which is allowed to critique the government, etc. All of these measures ensure that democratic governments have high levels of citizen participation. These are some facts about the democratic governments in Latin America and are used as an example that shows how you can support students in comparing and contrasting governments. Be sure to use current government data in your lessons. In Mexico, the chief of state and head of government is a president who is chosen directly by the citizens. The legal voting age is 18. The legislature is likewise directly elected by the citizens. An example of separation of powers in this democracy is that the Supreme Court judges are nominated by the president and approved by the legislature. 
The head of state in Brazil is a president who is elected directly by citizens age 18 and older. Members of the legislative branch are directly elected by the citizens, and the legislative branch has lawmaking authority. The justices for their highest court are appointed by the president, with approval from the legislature, showing that this democracy also provides for the separation of powers. These are the democratic governments in Europe, the United Kingdom, Germany, and Russia. In all three countries, citizens directly elect their national leaders. Remember that Canada and Australia are both independent nations who claim the monarch of Great Britain as their ceremonial chief of state. The monarch is represented by a governor general in both countries. In terms of the operation of the government, both countries have similar democratic systems. In Canada, members of the legislative branch are elected directly by the citizens. The legislative branch selects the head of government, the prime minister. Voting is available to all citizens age 18 and over. In Australia, members of the legislative branch are elected directly by the citizens. The legislative branch selects the head of government, who is the prime minister, and voting is required by all citizens age 18 and over. Teacher guidance will be needed initially to help students explain, compare, and contrast the government forms, but that should include inquiry to an understand at a deeper level how citizens across the world have varied relationships with their governments. Fundamental to, under, to demonstrating mastery of these standards is students' ability to explain the government types of each of the countries. This means that students should be engaged in inquiry when it comes to learning about the governments, not simply receiving information via lecture. Don't forget that explaining can take many forms, and students may enjoy working with and creating infographics such as these in order to demonstrate what they understand about a topic. These standards lend themselves to instructional strategies such as research, discussion, argument, content area writing, cooperative learning, and perspective taking. However you decide to teach this content, remember that students must be able to explain the form of government, leader of the government, and the ways citizens participate in government for each of the countries in the sixth grade standards. We hope that you have enjoyed this presentation and that the information it contains will support you in providing excellent instruction in the sixth grade Georgia Standards of Excellence in Social Studies.